all right hello and welcome to this guide on paragon board selection and pathing this is a companion video for the max roll guide of the same name that i wrote and uh so this is going to be something that you're going to probably want to go and reference that guide after you watch the video because there's a lot of information to digest here but this will be a nice way for you if you like to listen and, and watch instead of just read it straight through this will be a good starter introduction i guess for you for the uh, the actual guide and then the guide will be there for you uh, whenever you need it so uh, do bear in mind though this is a video about like kind of optimizing your board making it making it better making it uh you fit all the things in making your, your decisions about the board it's going to assume that you know the basics of what the paragon board is if you don't know that yet i strongly recommend highly recommend that you check out the paragon boards guide it's a introductory guide to the paragon boards on max Rule. before going to this one it won't take you long it's a pretty short thing and then hit this one up after that okay so as far as this guide we've got three sections that we're going to cover that once you've gone through all of them and you've considered all the things should make your experience with creating a paragon board setup for your build much easier paragon board is probably the thing that's going to confuse the most players it's also probably why it doesn't come into level 50 so you don't have to worry about it for a long period of time but once you get there if you're not following someone else's guide, if you're trying to make your own, this is going to be a sticking point for a lot of people. This guide is meant to help you overcome that and be able to still do it. And even if you're following someone else's guide, if you want to get a feel for like why they're doing the things they're doing, the decisions they're making, what the things they're doing on the board, um, this is still a good thing to check out because it'll just make give you a better understanding of, of all of that's going on. Uh, when we come up with a Paragon board setup. So the three sections we're gonna go through are choosing your board or your boards, excuse me, uh, then optimizing your path. And then we've got a more advanced section that's pretty short, but just some extra strategies for people who really wanna try to min-max their experience from the, from the start all the way through. So uh, let's start with the choosing your board section and then we'll go from there so this is going to be the first thing that's like a sticking point for a lot of people um how do you choose the boards that you want because there are a good number to choose from and they all have a lot of things going on there are eight total plus the starter board you you start with a starter board everyone has that and then you have an eight other ones to choose from but you're not going to want to choose all of them because you have a limited number of points you're not you don't have enough points to select everything on every board not even remotely close to that so you're going to have to prioritize the boards that you want so we're going to try to determine that the boards that we want based upon the best nodes on the board that you can incorporate into your build so let's talk about those nodes what nodes are we like factoring in the most when we're deciding whether or not a board is good for us the first one you're going to think about is the legendary nodes the legendary nodes there's one of each on every board and the whole board is kind of themed around it and it's named after it so like ceaseless conduit is like the name of the uh, the board as well as the legendary node on it if a legendary node is let me let me back right there a legendary node can be really really good for your build it's obviously a high power node so you're going to want to consider every legendary node and see if they fit your your build some will not fit it at all they won't be good for your build in any way shape or form but some will be really really strong potentially strong enough to where it's a must take board so you're definitely going to want to look at these hard and see where they fit in but they are not the only consideration and some other things could be even more important depending on how strong they are so let's talk about the other things that you're going to look at along with legendary nodes you're going to look at rare nodes rare nodes are also powerful uh nodes that can oftentimes be powered up either through a bonus or through um a glyphs a glyph that we're going to talk about later but uh, these usually have really strong stats for you and they are higher than other nodes on the board legendary nodes are like a unique stat there's something really like crazy whereas rare nodes are going to be somewhat more traditional stuff like damage to elites movement speed for four seconds of a killing elite on this one are are really cool stats but they're not like legendary like these unique crazy stats um they're going to have a higher number than say the magic nodes that we're going to talk about in a minute and they're gonna have stuff that common nodes don't have at all 
So these are going to be a strong consideration consideration for your build when you determine whether or not a board is good for it. Um, one thing to factor in also with these is that rare nodes are typically really powerful early game because they are additive damage versus multiplicative damage. Legendaries, if they're offensive, are pretty much always multiplicative. Um, usually rare nodes are additive, at least on the non-bonus section. So these can be really, really strong early. They might fall off a bit late. So you might be factoring them in strong or strongly early on, but then maybe later on you're thinking about switching out of those. We'll talk about respecking your board in a little bit. As far as magic nodes, let's talk about magic nodes. So these are usually very similar to rare nodes and they show up in a cluster. So if you have a rare node, you'll always have a cluster of magic nodes around. It. I think it's I think it's five. I'm just trying to remember that off the top of my head. I think it's always five magic nodes. Um, could be four, but I think it's five. So you're always going to have a cluster of these around your rares. And they're usually going to be similar stats to the rare, but not always. So they can be, for example, they can be an attribute. Or they can uh, or they can be the stats. Oh, I just looked at chat. I should never should not have done that. You guys actually got me from you actually got me finally. <laughs> I know you've been trying, you finally got me. Um so they, they're usually a stat that's similar to rares, but they can also be an attribute. And they're gonna be a higher point value than the common nodes. They're gonna be seven versus five. So um, these are gonna be factored in, but what, the way that, to really look at magic nodes and rare nodes, in my opinion, is look at them as kind of like a cluster because that's what they are. There are clusters. You have the rare node and you have the magic nodes around them. So you're gonna look at that cluster and say, is this actually good for my build? Uh, and if it if it is, then great. If part of it is and part of it's not, that's something to factor in as well. But uh, take a look at both the magic and the rare, because oftentimes the magic can be really, really good. Even though they don't have as high um, stats as the rare nodes, there are more of them. And so oftentimes it can be really good to invest in them. Uh, then the last thing that you will see on the board outside of Glyph Sogs, we're not talking about it here very much because it's not a really a factor, but you're going to see common nodes. Don't worry about those when you're factoring in your Paragon board. They're never going to matter as far as what Paragon board you're going to choose. They're just attributes. They're always strength, dexterity, uh, intelligence, willpower. That is only four. Yeah, so it's either strength, dexterity, intelligence, or willpower. It's never any non attribute, and it's never more than plus five, and they're all over the place. So we're only looking at legendary, rare, magic and then glyph sockets now glyph sockets are very different than the others where it's literally a place where you put a glyph and you're going to collect glyphs as you're playing in the end game and some of these glyphs are going to be very powerful and they're going to do a lot of really cool things with your board they're going to have a radius around them where they either affect uh, nodes around them or are affected by nodes so they could be for each five willpower in the radius that you that you actually choose you get some bonus or they could be they make rare or magic nodes more powerful and so factoring these in is going to be a really important thing as far as determining what uh what boards you're going to want so what you're going to want to do is you need to figure out okay which glyphs do i want and there's there's lists everywhere of like what the glyphs are and there's a there's a limited number of glyphs for every build and then based upon what the glyph has on it what areas of these boards are best for me so like i have a glyph socket right let's look at this one here and it has a number of stats on it but one of the important things about it is we to get a bonus on this there's a bonus on every glyph socket i need 25 dexterity so I need to be, I need this glyph to go in a socket that has a lot of dexterity reasonably close so I'm not spending a lot of points to get to it. Another reason, or another thing to determine when you're looking at your glyphs is, is it one that is powered up by attributes in the area? And is the power of that glyph really, really strong? Do I want to collect a lot of attributes? If that's the case, then you're going to want it to be socketed in an area that has a lot of that attributes, and they're not all the same. And one uh, one thing you could do to, to look is, for example, we have um, Macro Bio Boy made this. 
um it's just a breakdown of the distribution if this looks crazy dude don't worry about it it's just, i'm just just for concept you don't need to use this in particular but to show you the distribution this is druid boards of attributes and glyph slots so these are all glyph slots and then this is the number on each board that you have so for example the heightened malice board has 70 will 49 dexterity 34 intelligence and 5 strength i wouldn't want to put a strength one in there i don't think there's actually a strength one for you or there, there might be but i would definitely wouldn't want to put a strength one in there and i probably don't want to put an intelligence one in there but a willpower one would be great like if i have something that gets powered up by willpower as far as a glyph the glyph says for every five willpower i get some really great stat this is an excellent spot to put it but then survival instincts is even better. So I wanna factor this in when I'm looking at my, my glyph slots, uh, glyph sockets, what is gonna give me the best attributes for the things that I need the most? So the glyphs that are gonna be powered the most up or to make sure I can get my bonuses for the smallest possible cost. So um, another thing or an area that you can, let's just, let's, an area where you can benefit drastically from this is let's say you needed 20 25 dexterity right we see this socket that's 25 dexterity rare nodes usually if not always uh have attributes on them and there are 10 so if you had two of these i don't think you can get actually i don't remember if you can get two of the same attributes in a glyph socket area either way this is this is like worth two nodes of commons so if you can get a socket that has a rare node that has the attribute you're looking for it's a big boost it's really valuable magic on the other hand there are some magic nodes that have attributes there are always seven this doesn't really help you as far as getting to the number that you want so if you have either way if you have a requirement requirements are always in multiples of five this is 25 dexterity or like you have a bonus for every five dexterity you get something this doesn't help you on either because there are only ever two magic nodes of each attribute there's never three we counted we couldn't find any but if it's between this and a common which is five take the magic if, if it's if it takes you no more points to get to it right? you don't have to go any farther on the board take the magic it's two extra attributes so it's you know it's worth it uh, but other than that, there's not a ton of value added between these two when it comes to trying to get your either your bonuses or extra attributes um, from a, a glyph that benefits from it. So bear that in mind. Don't like go chasing the dexterity or the, excuse me, don't go chasing the magic nodes over the normal nodes. It's not actually going to save you anything. It's just a little bit more attribute and that's all it will offer you. But hey, that's better than nothing. So when you're going through this take a look and see when you're trying to get your bonus or you're trying to get as many as you can not only how many are in there how many are in this area but how far away are they from the path that i would would like to take through that which we haven't talked too much about the pathing yet but you're probably gonna have a general sense of the path because you're looking at all the nice things on there right there's so this glyph socket here uh, maybe there's this legendary over this way maybe there's some other rare note i like also I'm going to have to path through, you know, whatever it is to get there. Okay, is that natural path, that natural, more efficient path that I'd like to take, are the attributes that I want in the areas um, that I'm already going? Because if so, then that's great. I've just saved myself some points from having to, like, so let's say I want to go up this path, right? Um, if this is the path I wanted to go and there, the attributes are all in this path, that's... That's free. I was going to go that way anyway. If, however, they're like over here, well, now I've got to spend extra points to get there. So that's going to be points I can't spend on high value nodes later. So I want to avoid that if I can. Um, it's not always possible to. And then if it's not possible, let's find out what's the minimum amount of uh, nodes I have to take to get there. So if I have to take one extra, that's better than two extra, you know, you know clearly. Uh, you'd want to do that as much as possible if i can get to a cluster of them like whereas like i take one and i get two versus i take one and i only get one then i should go that path as well so these are the little decisions you'll have to like start thinking about at this point as you're determining what sockets are good for what glyphs so you want to figure out what glyphs you want and then what sockets work out for them and look and see if you can find multiple sockets that will work 
for any particular glyph. The more op options you have, the easier it will be to op optimize your board. So maybe there, there's one that's really, really good, but there's another one that's, that's almost uh, as good. It's very close. Consider both of those, factor both of those in, just keep in mind, keep, you know, bear that in mind. Like, okay, I have two options for this particular glyph as I'm looking at my Paragon board. Um, I will just determine later which one I should put it in, but I know I have at least two good options. The more options you have, the better. Okay, so that is pretty much all that. So let's let's quickly talk about this one thing though, because we're mostly talking about here how to most efficiently get our glyph sockets up and running, right? But we do also want to bear in mind that as we were talking about earlier, some of these rare nodes have for X amount of this stat we have, we get more powerful. We get we get some really great things. So X amount of attribute, we get this stat. You might want to take as much as possible in a certain uh, in a certain range, and not worry as much about being hyper efficient about your pathing. In that case, you're going to be looking for the nodes or the, excuse me, the sockets that have the most of that, and that's your biggest priority. So it just it just depends on the socket you're looking for, or excuse me, the glyph you're looking for, and um, and how important that stat is. I wish this was more of a science than an art thing at that point, but it, it really is more of an art where you just have to kind of know how important a stat is to you. And then it's like, okay, is it so important that I want to overinvest in it, so to speak? Like beyond the bonus, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep adding more attribute. Or is it just, I want to get to that bonus and then I'm good. So I'm going to maximize the efficiency of this socket by just going to where those those attributes are at 25 or whatever it is and no further and that's something that you'll have to determine as you're looking at the glyph and what powers it up and how important that glyph is for you like the, some of the strongest glyphs you're going to want to like absolutely maximum power them and others the bonus is going to be more important and others don't even have that right they just like there is a there is a bonus at the 25 or whatever points but there's no additional benefit to stacking more attributes that's not the way this glyph works so it just all depends on how the glyph works okay so now let's talk about making your choices right we've already determined all right here's how we're like kind of looking at the different things we're trying to weigh our options is legendary important here uh, are these rare nodes really good that I really want them? Are they inside of a socket area? Because that's going to be really, really valuable compared to one that's outside of a socket. Outside of a socket can still be good, but the ones that are inside sockets are the best because they're going to also power up your glyph in some way or be powered up by your glyph. Um, does the rare node have really good magic nodes around it clustered in there? So it's like I can get a lot of benefit from a small area. Uh, and then what sockets do I want, or excuse me, what glyphs do I want, and what sockets best fit them. Now that we've looked at all that stuff, we have a general idea of that. Now we're going to make our choices. So we're going to make a priority list of all eight boards. We're going to pick the five to six best and order them from our most desirable or least. Number one is this is definitely going to happen, absolutely. Number two is also that, but maybe not quite as good as number one. We're still going to put it on the board for sure, but it, number one is the one I need the most, right? Five and six, I might not even use them, but if I get that far, I've got them. They're still valuable to me. They're just maybe not as valuable as the other ones. So we're gonna make this priority list from one to six, five to six, whatever it is, depending on how, how valuable those are to you. And then we're just gonna have that, you know, that list is there. Now we're gonna start building out our board, knowing which ones we're gonna, we're gonna prioritize over the other ones. And we'll throw out two to three boards because they're just not going to be worth it worth investing and we're better off investing more into the other boards now if a legendary node is especially powerful and synergistic for your build you're almost always going to want to invest in it like there's just some legendaries that are so good that you would never not want it it's too strong that's a board you're going to take right you're definitely going to take that board so we're good there uh, and then there's also some legendary nodes that they might actually not be best for your final setup but before some things about your build come online, they could be really good. I know there's at least one barbarian board where this happens, um, and and Rax does make a Rax makes a a respec on that one. So bear that in mind too. Just because a legendary note isn't good for you end game, doesn't mean you can't have two setups: one for early end game where that one's really good, and then respec out later to another um, another legendary node that's better for you later or another board altogether is just better for you 
And like we talked about earlier, don't just look at the rare nodes. Also here, the magic nodes, look at them as like a cluster. Um, it might be that the rare nodes powerful enough on its own. It might be it's not and the magic, the magic nodes uh, make up for it. It might be that the whole cluster is just not quite good enough. Take a look at them in the entirety of them, especially if they're in a glyph socket area, makes them even potentially more powerful because they can be powered up or they can add attributes um, to a glyph that you really want. Also remember that not every cluster has to be good in order for a board to be worth it. There's a lot of clusters on these boards. Uh, you don't need them all. You don't want them all. You just want the best ones. And so consider what the best ones are and you can just avoid the other ones completely and save the points. Uh, plan for the glyphs that you wanna use and look for the socket to best fit them. This is like the whole socket section there. Like the, really, really important. Know which glyphs you want. Know where the sockets are that are gonna work best for them and then plan accordingly to put those glyphs in those sockets and find a way to path into them so that you can actually activate them and get the bonuses. Uh, consider the path you need to take to pick up the nodes that you want. So we're gonna talk about this more real soon here, the whole optimization, but even at this point, just take a look at your board and say, okay, these are all the things I want. Is this realistic? Am I having to take a lot of like really crazy paths to get where I want to? If that's the case, you might be better off saying that one of these uh one of these nodes or one of these um clusters or uh so something on that board is just not quite as worth it as i thought it was it's not it's just going to cost too much and maybe i don't do that um and maybe that doesn't make the board as good and maybe it changes your um changes your priority list just factor in pathing a little bit right now don't worry, go too crazy about it but factor in a little bit is this realistic am i going way too far out to get all the things that i want um, or is this a fairly efficient looking path? And don't forget defense this is a really easy thing, especially for newer players to, uh, to, to make a mistake with. Defense on the Paragon board can be really, really powerful. And if you don't take it, you are going to be too squishy for especially the more, some of the more end game stuff like Nightmare Dungeons, you're gonna be too squishy. So make sure that you have a good balance of offense and defense in the selections that you make on your board. Okay, now let's go into optimizing your path. This is all about getting as many of the nodes that you want, priority list considered, in the shortest possible route. We want to waste as little as we possibly can to get the things that we need. So to do that, we're gonna do a few things. First off, we're gonna look at, can we rotate boards to potentially make a path a lot shorter. A lot of times rotating the board is gonna do this. You can rotate the board at 90 degrees, which means you can make any connection point connect to any other, because these are squares. The only exception is if it's gonna like head back into one. So for example, this one here pushes back in, in like a big circle here, not a true circle, but like these four boards are together. Well, if I head back into here, I can't put in a new board. I've only got the old board. That's the only time that I can't like make a new connection with a new board outside of that i can always make a new connection with a new board from any connector um so definitely be considering that as you're putting your board together and thinking about how it's gonna like gonna like piece together if i rotate this am i gonna save points if the answer is yes you should rotate if the answer is no stay where you are the next thing this is really important a lot of a lot of new players are going to make this mistake don't deviate from the path to the nodes that you really want. Don't be like, oh yeah, well on my way, I could get this five dexterity here. Or, you know, there's this like nice strength node over here. I need strength. No, you don't. You don't need the common nodes. The common nodes are only fillers. The only time, the only time you need the common nodes are in the socket areas to power up your glyphs or and give you the glyph bonus or give you extra of that glyph power that you want. That is the only time that you care about the normal nodes outside of using them to path to what you want. So this board here is not good. It's taking up double attributes, uh, common nodes constantly throughout it. This is a highly inefficient board and they're costing themselves multiple clusters of good nodes by doing this. So get there as quick as you can and then just worry about your big nodes, the valuable stuff and only take common nodes when you have to the path somewhere or when they're in a glyph socket area and they're powering up your glyph 
in some way, either giving the bonus or giving you the stat, the big stat gain. If you do this one thing alone, you're like a long, a lot of the way there. If you if you avoid this, you're gonna your your board's gonna be so much better. Once you've done that, you can start to think about optimizing your attribute distribution. So at this point, we are already at okay. We've made a path. We've gotten to all the nodes we've wanted. We've considered all of the bonuses in our glyph areas. We picked up all the rares, all the blues. We picked up any legendaries we needed. Our board is more or less complete. And we are efficient as far as the amount of points that we've spent. At this point, that's where you're at. You've done all of those things. You're like, yeah, I can't find any points that I could save by going a more efficient path. Um, I can't pick up any more valuable nodes. We are at our max. Well, even then, you can still optimize this because there are certain paths that you're gonna take that actually have multiple options. So we're looking at this area here, right? So I have decided to go, or whoever did this, decided to go up here to the left one and then straight up to connect to here, okay? Now, they could do this a couple of other ways and still spend the same amount of points. So they could go here, right? They could connect that way. And they could go, let's see, I, I think this board, if I remember, it goes this way. So we actually had to go here, then here, then here. And so we could also go over here and it would still cost the same. So why does that matter? It matters because you will need attributes for rare bonuses. We actually didn't talk about this before, so we should talk about this a little bit. So there's a rare bonus here, right? on a rare node so you have these are rare nodes this, this is not your glyphs this is just your rare node and it says here there's a bonus another 14 percent core skill damage if your requirements are met and there's 540 intelligence in this one this gets larger and larger the far the more boards you put out so each subsequent board you put out the rare nodes on that gets up to be a higher cost at some point it's going to actually be hard to hit those requirements if not impossible there's going to be certain ones that are hard but possible you're going to want to get as much of the attributes you need for those nodes as you can you're going to try to get to that bonus like this one's hit it. it's 8, 814 but let's say you're at 520 out of 540 well one way you might be able to make up for that is by pathing this um, a little bit differently. Maybe there's some, I actually don't remember what these icons mean, but maybe there's, I think this is dexterity. So let's say this is dexterity here. If I path over this way and go up, it doesn't cost me any more. Um, let's see, does it like one, two, three, that one actually does. Um, I've actually have a path over uh, over this way. There's, so there's these, these areas where you can get one extra attribute of something that you need, It'll cost you one, of something you don't need. It's so like maybe we're minus five willpower and we're plus five decks now. Well, that gets us closer to our bonus. So these are small adjustments that you can make that can optimize your board. They're not, they're not a big deal, but they can make a difference as far as being able to hit your bonuses. There's just little things you can do to improve your board going forward. Okay, that is the majority of what you can do to optimize your board. Go through, make sure you know, this is summarize, your legendaries, know your rares, know your magic nodes, know which ones you want, know your glyphs, know which ones you want, know how to power up those glyphs or what rare and magic nodes you might wanna power up with your glyphs. And then find the sockets that fit that the best, either they have the rare magic nodes you want, or they have the attribute distribution that's best for, for that particular glyph. And then put that all together, determine which boards you want, make a priority list, and then optimize your path, rotate your boards as needed, don't deviate too far, uh, don't deviate at all, outside of the things that you actually want, like uh, the nodes that we've all chosen, don't worry about common nodes, don't pick up extra common nodes, there's no point. And then uh, you can optimize that path a little bit and collect an extra, decks here for willpower there if it's important for you if you want to go even more advanced than that here's some other things that you can do let's talk about glyphs and how they power up because they're not like the rest of the nodes glyphs actually level and as they level they get more powerful they give a better stat distribution to anything they give it to or they have more stats per attribute they get and on top of that 
they increase in area. So there's certain points where they get a, a higher radius. So this is next radius increase at level 15, right? Um, you see like radiuses on some of these. Like this one, you see the radius here. That's not the starting radius. That's the final radius. The final radius is, uh, is that far out. It, when you get it, it will be smaller. So it'll be harder to get the attributes that you need. It won't have necessarily all of the blue nodes in its radius. It won't have a bunch of the white nodes in its radius. And it will give a smaller amount of stat at lower levels. The, the amount of stats it gives goes up. So when you are starting out your Paragon board, you will be better off to not prioritize these, but instead prioritize rare and blue nodes and legendary nodes because they're going to give you more. Later, once you've got these leveled up, they will be very, very valuable. But if you take a few more like rare or blue nodes early and then respec out into the glyphs or respec into the, the stats they need later, uh, you can actually optimize your leveling process quite a bit. You can get quite a bit of extra power early on, which of course will help you to upgrade your glyphs. It'll give you more power. You need to upgrade these in nightmare dungeons, which are going to be more challenging content. So any little bit of power you can get early on is gonna gonna make it easier for you to upgrade these It'll take less time and then your board will come online in its more optimal state faster so this is one thing you can do to just give yourself some extra advantage early when you're just starting to work with the paragon board you don't have all your points yet you don't have all your glyphs leveled don't prioritize those as much. They, you know, they, they, they're fun. They're, you want them eventually. You definitely want to level them up. You want to find them, level them up, and socket them in. But they don't need to be prioritized until later. Um, another thing we can talk about is uh, far away valuable nodes. The common strategy will be if there's two things, there's two nodes on a board that you really want, and they're the opposite side of each other. There's like one's way over here and one's way over here. Just straight line into it on that on that board. But there might be nothing in the middle that's any good at all. It might be it might be terrible. Another strategy that you could employ is what we've done here, which is in fact to optimize our leveling experience. What we do is so here we have really good legendary node we want. And then up here we have the glyph sock we want. That's really good. So what I could have done is I could have went straight through here. But if I did that, my board would kind of get get janked up because I, what I want is I want to go here first. I want to take all this stuff. So I could go all the way over there and then come back, or I could try to connect that. But it's not as it's not as efficient. But instead, what I can do is I can just come back into that by going in a big circle around. And then later on, I actually respect the board and take that out and go this way because I save a few points. But this allows me to get the legendary I wanted first and um, the socket I wanted first. And then this board I also prioritized over this and come back to it later. And I can save some points doing this. In this case, I save points not having to go this way later. And I save points not going that way earlier. So you don't have to just always take a straight line through the same board to get all the things you want. Sometimes you can, you can find a way to meander all the way through some other things and get back around to it later, and that will save you Paragon points if you can do that. That brings us to the last thing, respecking. Some people don't like to respec, that's fine, but respecking will just make you more powerful early. Your ultimate board setup is not going to be as efficient early as it will later. It's just, we already talked about glyphs. Glyphs aren't gonna be as strong, for, for example. Sometimes rare nodes are much stronger earlier game than later game. If you're willing to do a respec and create a multiple setups, so you have a early end game, a late end game, you'll find that you're much more powerful earlier, or quite a bit more powerful earlier than, than you would have been if you just stuck with the same one and never respec. And honestly, it's not gonna cost you as much as you think. It's not that crazy expensive in the end game. You will be able to do it. 
and it will benefit you. So consider doing a respec, consider having multiple setups, one for early end game, one for late. That's what we've kind of built in here already, where we're just like, it's technically the same setup, but we're respecing later because we're changing out a path and changing out a few other things. So this is, this is the same concept. So we're doing the respec already in the build guide, right? There's the respec right there. So f consider doing something like that. And this is going to be further optimized too. I'm setting this up to be easier for players to figure out. But there's a lot of things that I will do when I run this to just be a little bit more efficient. Like I won't focus all of the glyph nodes immediately. And you can do something like that. And then you'll definitely gain an advantage over if you just try to do it all the same way, the entire way. Okay, that is everything I want to say on that. This is quite a, quite a long video. Uh, hopefully it came out in a way that made sense. I know it's very easy to ramble on this particular topic, but I hope it made enough sense. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, feel free to come into my Discord or my stream and ask questions about the Paragon board because it's pretty complex. And definitely use the Max Roll guide as a companion as you're working with it. Hopefully it will describe things in a way that is, uh, is clear to you if I didn't make it as clear as I could have in this video. But again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great time in Diablo 4. I cannot wait to get going. We're one day away. It's going to be so much fun. Thanks again, and have a great rest of your day.